This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by Audible. What's up, everyone? John Brittinger from Techno Buffalo with a full review for you of LG's latest, the G3. There is crazy competition to be crowned smartphone king, so let's play a game of phones and see who should sit on the throne. I usually start off all my reviews talking about call quality, but not so fair to talk about call quality here since it didn't have all the bands for AT&T. But when calls were connected, they sounded really good, crystal, crystal clear, and speakerphone is also very loud. And we get our US unit, regardless of what carry it's on, uh, I'll update it to talk about call quality. Let me just jump into what this phone is really all about. It is just a giant screen. So in case you're wondering what this giant screen is, you probably should already know. It's a 5.5 inch quad HD display that is 2560 by 1440 with an insane 534 PPI, uh, making it the highest resolution phone ever in existence. It's actually tying for the highest resolution phone that has ever been put out on the market. And as you'd expect, it looks really, really crisp. But like I kind of thought, I figured everything was gonna look just gorgeous when I saw it. And those extra pixels really don't matter that much unless you're viewing something that takes up all of those pixels. So just bear that in mind. Uh, taking that pixel count out of the equation, the white balance is a little bit off and kind of looks a little bit pink to me. Uh, but that just kind of nitpicking, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I know this isn't gonna be the popular thing to say, but it doesn't look that much better than a 1080p display. Next, let's jump into design. In a sea of sameness, this thing really stands out to me. It has almost no bezels at all. It looks just like a screen. It kind of melts in your hands. Uh, when LG announced they were gonna do sort of a metal paint on the back of plastic, I was like, you can put lipstick on a pig, it's still gonna be a pig. But it actually works really well here. Uh, you can tell it's plastic, but the metal kind of gives it a nice balance between weight uh, and sort of the device feel. You know, like the HTC One A8, you pick it up and you know it's a heavy device. It doesn't feel as sort of heavy as that. It certainly feels more heavy than something you'd get on a Galaxy S5. Buttons on the back are still there and still weird, but way easier to get used to than the G2. Having them on the back though does make the phone look friggin' awesome and slick and sweet, so maybe it's form over function here. Like the G2 before, it took me about four days to get used to the volume and power buttons uh, on the back, try to try to find where it was. Still though, the camera button's located right above it, so oftentimes I kept snacking my finger right on the camera, which certainly smudges it and didn't lead to all the best pictures. I had to sort of clean it off, and then the pictures came out great. But we'll talk about camera uh, coming up. Uh, so I know I'm nitpicking here on the buttons, people get used to it. Honestly, I didn't end up using the buttons all that much because it's got a pretty cool knock feature. You just double tap the screen and it turns off, double tap it again, turns on. You can also set a password um, if you want by doing that as well. So, you know, it's kind of cool touch. So you really have to use the buttons all that much as well. I also like that it's removable back so you can pop in a fresh battery. Uh, it's also where your SIM and micro SD card are going to live. Overall though, the device feels and looks as premium as it is. I really like just looking at this phone. You know, a lot of Android phones look identical. This one, you can really tell that it's something different. Next, let's jump into software. LG has done a lot to customize Android here. Aesthetically, icons are flatter and LG's widgets are brighter and the app tray scrolls horizontally. So flatter is kind of the new thing to do. Our SK Telecom unit has the most bloatware I have ever seen on a single device. It's got like a whole screen of bloatware. But presumably, and hopefully when it hits US shores, it'll be better. I'm, I'm hoping, it can't be any worse. Uh, I do love that LG has universal search on here. It works awesome with my favorite features that comes to Android on iOS. This one works just as elegantly. You hit the little question with the magnifying glass, you type in what you want and it populates one of your apps or find apps real quickly. It's a great way to go. Uh, other LG stalwarts like QApps and QMemo are here as well. So you can take memos right on your screen. I didn't use it all that often, but they're here. It's a really heavy skin, but it feels light and lets Android be Android. They add to it, but don't take away. That's kind of what I mean by being light. There's a lot of LG things there in the settings menu. It looks all different, but it doesn't take away from the experience. They're not throwing features at you that you kind of have to use. They sort of took an HTC approach, I think, where they put sort of features on there they thought you might use the most. Take a real quick second to thank our friends at audible.com. Check out audiblepodcast.com to get a free downloadable audiobook of your choice. They have over 100,000 choice to choose from if you're into the romance, and I'm not going to judge you. Mystery, fiction, nonfiction, anything in between. You can listen to it whether you're in your car, at the gym, just walking around, whether you can sort of pretend to be reading a regular book and have your headphones plugged in. Either way, they've got you covered. Check them out today. So next, let's talk about camera. On the back, it's got a 13 megapixel uh, camera, which is standard nowadays, but LG's got a pretty few awesome tricks. First, 
freaking 4K. It's awesome. Did a whole video on it. The microphones too is pretty good as well. If you want to see that 4K video unedited, hit the link down below. We'll take you off to that. If you look at the back though of the phone, you're going to see a little black oval right next to the lens and it's a freaking laser for autofocus. It's got a freaking laser beam, uh, which means it focuses really, really fast and more importantly, really accurately, even when taking macro shots, which was great. I'm not the best photographer in the world. I was able to get things that looked really, really good and pictures generally looked, like I said, really, really good, even in low light. Uh, we have a full gallery of pics up on the full review if you want to see more in that full review, link's going to be right down below. Uh, some cool software tweaks here for the selfie lover, so you can kind of make a fist and it'll do a countdown, take a pic. It's a nice little feature if you want to take selfies, which listen, we make fun of everybody take selfies, but we all do it. I know you're a selfie fiend and you're going to go blind for it. So all this stuff, the, the camera, the quad HD, the quad core processor, figure it's going to be a drain on battery, right? That was a big concern for me and you probably thought the same thing. So first, it's got a 3,000 mAh battery in it, and surprisingly, it's really good. In fact, I noticed no battery difference versus a standard 1080p powered phone. I was easily able to get through a full day. My usage is pretty heavy. Generally, I'm up around 6.30 in the morning, connected to Wi-Fi, about two hours of phone calls. I've got two email accounts being pulled down every five minutes, some social networking going on, actually a lot of social networking going on, emailing, some video viewing, generally connected to Wi-Fi when I'm at home or the office, some like text messaging. The time I plug my phone at the end of the day, and I don't keep my brightness set at auto either. I keep it generally about 75%. End of the day, I had over 45% of my battery, which is really incredible. And even better than some 1080p phones, about on par with what I had with HTC One M8, which I say only has a 1080p screen. So I don't know what magic LG sort of zapped into here, but they did a really good job with battery life. So don't worry about that. That was one of my biggest concerns when I started using it. So let's go ahead and wrap this sucker up. This is close to a perfect phone as I've seen and the best Android device I have ever used. It's fast, it's got a gorgeous screen, all day battery life, awesome camera, and everything I needed to do, it did almost flawlessly. For those of you guys that know my reviews and watched me for a while, you know I don't say these things lightly at all. I didn't think anything would ever top my enthusiasm this year for the HTC One M8, but this does. Sub might be turned off by its little bit larger size, but for me, with its super thin bezels, I hardly noticed I was holding essentially a small tablet in my hand. This gets the highest ranking we've ever given out, a 9.5. It's as close to perfect a phone as I have ever seen. If you wanna get a new device, don't think twice. Run to your nearest store whenever this hits your uh, carrier to pick this thing up. You will not regret it. It'll serve you well for one, two years or beyond. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave your comments down below. Let us know what you think. And again, full written review. Link's going to be right down below to go check that out. Until next time, I'm John Rettinger. See you guys next video. Bye-bye. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. We'll be the first one to know whenever we upload new content. We've got new stuff coming every single day. We want to make sure you see what's new in the world of consumer electronics.